Segment five, <clears throat> your title, America Alone. You sum up European disdain for the United States by quoting the British journalist Brian Reed, who writes that Americans are, quote, self-righteous, gun-toting, military-loving, sister marrying, abortion-hating, gay-loathing, foreigner-despising, non-passport-owning rednecks. Mm. To which Mark Stein replies... I think you left out the most colourful bit of that description, I, uh, Well, the there's way. a bit that's uh, rather uh, vivid mixturition. Yeah, he, he see, he, who think that uh, I think God gave them uh, the most, uh, the, the biggest... Uh, uh, manhood in the world, I'm being discreet there, yes, so right. that they could urinate on the rest of the planet. It's something right. like that. Something so, like that. to which Mark Stein replies, if one were to formulate it less disapprovingly, mm -hmm. Brian Reed's Anatomy of Americans equals, quoting, uh, quoting you now, culturally confident, self-reliant, patriotic, procreative, religious, democratic, constitutional rednecks who believe in national sovereignty rather than ineffectual poser multilateralism, close quote. What makes the United States different? Well, I think, I think the United States is still different. I think it's clear that there's a big slab of the population here that is attracted to the idea of being like Europe. Uh, Europe has only been able to be like Europe the last 60 years because uh, the United States has, uh, has served as the guarantor of last resort. In effect, Germany doesn't need an army because the U.S. Army lives in Germany, uh, and so Germany has been free to spend its defense budget on uh, socialized health care and all kinds of other things. Yeah. In effect, U.S. taxpayers pay for the German health care system. In 2010, this year, we still have 50,000 troops, what, 60-some mm -hmm. years after the end of the... 50, after the end of the Second World War, we still have 50,000 troops in Germany. Right, uh, which, which is ridiculous. And any time anybody talks about uh, withdrawing them, as Secretary Rumsfeld does, uh, the, argument, the argument now uh, that was advanced at the time is that the closure of those bases would be devastating for surrounding German supermarkets and restaurants. Right. So that is why the United States taxpayer pays to keep this vast army in Germany is because otherwise those supermarkets and restaurants would go out of business. So, so if America goes down the European path, who is going to be the, the sugar daddy for America in the way that America served as the sugar daddy for Europe? Uh, there isn't one. Uh, but what heartens me is that um, America is not yet European. I was very despondent by the results of the, as you can imagine, of the 2008 election. But what was interesting to, what was interesting to me is the, is the nature of the rebellion against that. There was the financial crisis, which happened in a lot of countries. And in a lot of places, from Iceland to Bulgaria, you had a uh, massive demonstrations of people pounding on the door of parliament saying, why didn't you, the government, do more for us? This is the only country in the Western world where a mass protest movement rose up saying, uh, why don't you do less for us? Why don't you get the hell out of our pocket? Uh, why don't you keep out of our lives, big government, and we do just fine? And it doesn't, it's not clear to me whether it speaks for 50.001 percent of the American people, but it speaks for it's a significant chunk of them, and that differentiates uh, the United States uh, from the uh, most of the other Western nations.